the reason I say that... Oh, okay. Yeah! <laughs> that was really quick. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another gameplay video. This is going to be the first gameplay video I've recorded since the weekend, so I just want to say now thank you guys so much for all the birthday wishes. I really do appreciate that. It's very sweet of you guys to comment and that kind of stuff. We had a couple of you guys do so, so I really appreciate it. Hopefully I've responded to you by now. Uh, if I haven't, I apologize. But yes, I'm 29 now. I'm a little bit older. So anyway, uh, guys, today we got a really fun deck. Uh, and we're going to I'm going to explain why we're playing this version of the list first. Uh, and basically, uh, to, to put this in perspective, Legend VD put this list together, uh, which I, of course, will link down below. Uh, and as you'll notice, it's an Abzan Spirit Sisters Call deck. Uh, and the reason I wanted to test this version out first is because it seems, out of the ones that I have seen, uh, it seems like a generally stable build of this deck. So what I mean by that is it's highly, highly focused on enchantments and creatures. Mostly everything else is kind of omitted. It's mostly just focused on those two things. And it's got a little bit of the crossover between things like the Spirited Companion. This is obviously a uh, Jukai Visionary, a, a, an enchantment and a creature. We've got the enchantment creatures here. Lots of like recursive stuff that we are going to be hopefully self milling or channeling some of this stuff into our graveyard and then utilizing that Spirit Sisters call to bring it back after we utilize things like Old Rudstein or we get a land off of the Binding of the Old Gods and then we can sack it uh, after that second saga or, you know, however we see fit. Um, but I wanted to test this out because Spirit Sisters Call in particular is a card that I'm very, very interested in and surprisingly haven't touched yet. It's not a card that I've actually played in any capacity. This is going to be the first time. Uh, and so I wanted to take Legend BD's deck for a spin before I go and either create my own or push in a different direction just to test some other things out before I create my own. Uh, and so uh, credit where credit's due, Legend BD, thank you so much for, for sharing this list, but also I am so excited because Spirit Sisters Call is a sick card. I'll go ahead and read this really quick and then we'll kind of jump into the games. But uh, if you don't know what this is, it's three a white and a black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, choose target permanent card in your graveyard. You may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with the chosen card. If you do, return the chosen card from the graveyard to the battlefield and it gains if this permanent would leave the battlefield, you exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Now, I think there's a lot of shenanigans that we can start to play with this card, and this this deck certainly utilizes a lot of that, but I'm very curious to see where the ceiling is with this card. Uh, again, this deck seems like a really good test run for it, and so that's kind of why we're starting here. Uh, but there are a lot of self-mill aspects. We've got the teachings of the Kirin, we've got the Dreadhound, uh, we've got the old Rudstein, all just trying to self-mill to get stuff into the graveyard, uh, as well as things like that channel mechanic uh, so we can then return them back uh, with that spirit sisters call so we'll see how this one goes guys I'm really excited about it I think it could be really good there's a lot of tech in here a lot of fun things we're going to be learning as we go so I do just want to make sure everybody understands I haven't I haven't played this deck yet we're giving this a test shot right now uh, for you guys so we'll see how it goes hopefully it's a fun one and uh, again legend BD thank you so much for sharing this list I really do appreciate it Let's jump right in, guys. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And the question is, do we keep this hand? We have no green source. However, we do have some big top end and a couple of spirited companions. This seems like a very under, uh, like below average hand, but I think we keep it based on the spirited companions. And the fact that we do have at least two of our colors of mana, that Dreadhound is a pretty bad draw for us. Not at all what we'd like. <laughs> Uh, at this point, a land would be great or just any other kind of, you know, uh, pushy spell. But let's see, we can get this down. I'd like a channel spell, something to start filling the graveyard a little bit. We now have all the lands we're probably going to need, at least for the foreseeable future, though. So that's good. Uh, we're in the in the right direction. Um, I like that. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, I'm going to attack in first. And then I think we just try for the old rut scene. Kind of thought that would not land, but that's cool. 
um and here we get that treasure token this is all just kind of helping us ramp into that dreadhound there are actually a number of ramp elements to this between the old rust scene as well as the channel stuff like there's kind of a lot of options so this in particular uh that was very timely being able to uh, search out a basic land is actually very good uh so they are stuck on lands and they did not counter last turn that does make me think uh we might be able to do this um I think first things first though we do attack in uh you do want to attack first I think in that instance just to see what they're gonna do and wow this does land that's phenomenal uh okay let's take the action um I think we definitely want this and the question is what else um really don't know it could be really anything um you know honestly it might just be the binding the reason i say that oh okay yeah <laughs> that was that was really quick uh the opponent kind of got mana screwed there ah it sucks all right guys let's jump into a game two right now all right guys here we are for game number two this is an interesting hand as well so this is a little bit slower than our previous in terms of we we really don't get to do anything until turn well i mean i guess we can play that but uh we'll see how this goes I, I definitely think we keep this i think this is probably a better hand than the previous one it just has no card draw which is a little unfortunate but we do have the ramp aspect pretty well covered so that's helpful um i'm gonna go ahead and lead on this it doesn't really matter um in this instance so i think i'd just go ahead and do that we're probably gonna run this into some issues here though this is gonna be a pretty fast deck if i had to guess uh and so uh yep so this is a card that again i haven't played that much with uh return to its hand reveal the top four cards of your deck you put a land card onto the battlefield tab okay and then you can return with that channel ability uh yeah definitely the right call to play this out then i think that's fine um we are gonna take a hit here annoying but fine um okay uh and i think the play is pretty straightforward we just channel this um yeah just grab a basic land uh we'll grab that second black well we've already got second black honestly i guess it didn't matter but that's fine um cool yeah i mean i think we're playing as smoothly as we can we've drawn quite a bit of lands so that's a little frustrating but hey it is the it is the game right you can only do so much kind of a surprising fateful absence a bit aggressive on there and um kind of okay with it but uh just a little bit too aggressive i would suggest um all right so we can throw this out and then i think we just um hit him with the binding of the old gods in particular on the archetype architect of restoration uh, i think that's definitely the most powerful threat this battlefield raptor is surprisingly annoying but this is gonna do a lot more damage and spit out tokens and i don't particularly want that um we're gonna destroy this but this still gets hit so that's good for us that at least slows them down and gives them only a couple cards in hand here that's actually a very surprisingly annoying card for us to deal with because it exiles our graveyard <laughs> uh which is not what we want but that's fine um here we just get to throw out that burning rune demon though uh and kind of hope for the best here we'll see how this ends up going uh definitely oops let's get you although hold on let's view battlefield really quick what's in our graveyard okay yeah there are a few things that we want uh all right let's go that route um we can't get another demon that's worth noting so i think we just go dreadhound either one is kind of good for us so i'll happily take it um and we'll see how this goes a little curious to see what they actually get here and hopefully this isn't like a um uh, whatever the three mana enchantment is nowadays that that exiles stuff i can't remember um hopefully hopefully we don't just die to that paladin class is very good they are going to be able to soup stuff up here um interesting that they are going to attack here uh we definitely just block the raptor um it's kind of an interesting play so we can blow that up with the binding of the old gods 
which I think is probably the correct play. It's going to slow them down enough uh, that we can probably scoot around whatever they're doing here. We could have attacked their creatures there, but I actually don't think we need to. I wish we could play both of these, but I think the play is just going to end up being to draw a card anyway here. So let's just do that. We could wait till their turn just to hold up that, you know, that threat. Uh, but I think at this point, we are definitely playing defensive anyway. If they don't have anything in hand here, we're we're pretty solid. Um, they are. Are they attacking in? <laughs> um, This doesn't seem like a great attack for them, but that's fine. I'm just going to keep killing their stuff. I mean, they can replay this, which is cool, but we still have the demon. You know what I mean? So it doesn't seem ideal. Um, it's going to come into play tapped anyway, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, throw the land out there. Uh, I mean, I think it's just Dreadhound, right? I think we just keep the bleeding from going too bad and get a little bit of damage off. Like, I... I'm uh, I'm slightly confused by the opponent's attacks. I don't feel like they're warranted attacks by any means. So, okay, they gain hexproof from a color. That does not mean protection from a color. Oh, uh, it can't be blocked by black. Okay, that's fair then, yeah. So we definitely just kill that with the next binding. That's fine, actually, yeah. I mean, that's a Sun Gold Sentinel is a great card against our deck. It is not a, like definite win for them however uh so we definitely just block here we want to keep that boon burning rune demon as safe as we can uh i think that's very crucial for us so anywhere we can just block with dreadhounds we're going to um all right i mean this is pretty straightforward uh although hold on so here's the deal choose the color Activate only if you control three or more different powers. Nah, I think we... It's a word cost of one. All right, yeah, we definitely just do this. Resolve. Auto pay. We definitely just have to get that out of there. I know this risks some damage in the air here, but I, I mean, I don't really think there's a better play for us, so I'm okay with that. Um, Non-legendary... I think we hmm I'm gonna do this whoops not two goodness gracious all right let's channel for one um I think it's honestly just this I do want to get the spirit sisters call going but I think just having the answer is so important here I guess we should have attacked with the dreadhound but again I'm just trying to be as safe as we can here so I'm playing it very, very slow. Um, yeah, so get another forest here. we binding. Get rid of one of these geists. Um, it does cost a couple to do this, which is really annoying, but I think it's just the best play. So taxing. I mean, it makes sense why they're doing what they're doing, but it's just so taxing. Um... I think we attack here for the six. There's really no reason not to. Um, I don't even know why they're blocking though. It's like kind of a weird block. I mean, it's a throwaway and they lose a life still. Um, I think I'm gonna pass. I kind of wanna, I don't really wanna use the channel ability yet because at this point, that's a trampling threat that's gonna deal a lot of damage to him. So I don't know, I'm just, playing it very safe because we only have five five life left here um and that's why i'm going for bindings and not the slower but probably more powerful play of the spirit sisters call yeah very annoying very frustrating um i don't know that that's actually that good so we can hit him for one off of this all right uh yeah that's pretty scary we don't have anything there Huh. So we kind of need to draw a card here. Um, I feel like this can't block. So first things first, let's attack in. Definitely just going to deal six there. They can deal so we can. 
Let's do this. It's mill three. Let's see what we hit. Nothing. Well, that's kind of sad. Um. So I think we just go this route and hope they don't have the paladin class. Oh no! Wow, they just got it then. Um, man, that was a tricky game. It was a surprisingly tricky game. We probably could have played better there, but you know what? I don't feel like we played badly. I feel like we played on the safe side. Um, maybe we could have done better. I don't know. That was a tricky one. All right, well, regardless, let's jump into a game three. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, here we are. Our goal this game, we have to get the Spirit Sisters call going. <laughs> that is 100% our goal. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is a keep. We really, this isn't a keep. Why did I keep this? Oh my gosh. I was thinking this was the green pathway land. Uh, well, we might just die. Why did I keep this? Oh, thank you. All right, cool. Never mind. We're the best. <laughs> that was so bad. Um, yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> deck you are a lifesaver um all right still not a great turn two obviously would love of like one of these down but uh it's fine everything's fine all right let's go black here let's go the old rut scene seems like a really good play here it's got a big butt uh we also in this case get a creature token along with it like i think that that's just the best play um okay kind of curious it's probably just binding if i had to guess um Yep, it just slows us down and makes it difficult for us to remove anything here. So I get that. That's cool. Uh, the question becomes, what do they do now? Um, because they don't have just like a super clean attack. It looks like they're not even going to do anything. All right, cool. Uh, we did get a land, which is also quite helpful. Um, Let's do this first. I'm going to throw this out there. Let's draw a card. Ooh. Guys? We got the thing. Also, sorry if my dog is barking. Um, all right, let's do this. We're going to mill a few cards. We're going to get another token, and then we pass. So this elite spellbinder is going to be a problem for us, obviously. Um, but we've got that spirit sister's call that is going to come down, and we've already got quite a number of things that we can use to swap out here. So this is actually pretty good. Um, we're going to train that. Um, I think we'll just block here. Save ourselves as much damage as we can at the moment, and then hope for something a little better this upcoming turn. All right, we did get a treasure token as well. I'm going to throw the counter here because that's just our best blocker, honestly. Uh, I don't really think that's a bad play. Let's go ahead and throw that Spirit Sister's Call out. Um, we could discard a card just to draw a card. Do we actually need to, though? I don't think so. Um, all right no attacks let's end the turn and here i think we just sacrifice our little little one one and get that burning rune demon all right let's take the action um can we just do that let's see what happens here um we at least got the spirit sisters call down which i think is just really important for us <laughs> um all right let's see what we can do Sorry my dog is going crazy in the background, by the way. I think somebody walked by our front door, uh, which tends to happen. Oh, rude. Very rude. Um, hmm. Okay. I mean, we can't really do anything about that, sadly. Okay. So they're just taxing us out. Uh, they're going to be able to attack in for four here. More than four here. Um... I think we like have to block. I don't love it, but I don't know that we have much of a choice. We're really getting outpowered here. Um, one thing I would note about this deck, while I understand why, I think it would make a lot of sense to have like Doom Scars or some kind of like Meat Hook Massacre, even just some kind of inch or a uh, sweeper that would really do some damage for them. Um, so we do get to play this which does kill the elite spellbinder uh which i do think is the right call because it is the flyer we're not gonna attack um we can do a lot of different things here 
I think I just take this and sacrifice this. Um, and let's kill the intrepid adversary. That powers down their board here. Um, still not sold that we're going to win this game, but I do think that gives us the best opportunity to do so. We can also just sack this again or this and get more of these. So we'll see what happens here. Four damage coming in. Hmm. I don't want to block that, but I feel like we might just have to. I just don't want... Yeah, I think we just have to. I just don't want to get to a position where they just have a freebie attack and get the win. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like that's so dangerous for us. All right, let's get this. Um, I wish we could play <laughs> anything. Um, I wish we had one more land here. Let's do this. Uh, we'll get another land. That just sets us up for next turn, I think. And then we'll just play this. Uh, not going to attack, obviously. Now the question is, what do we get? Um, so it could just be the greater, whatchamacallit, or actually Dreadhound, I guess, is better, isn't it? Yeah, let's go Dreadhound. Um, we'll sack the insect, obviously. We mill three cards in this process, but we also get to ping them for one, and now we've got a 6-6. So at the very least, we're de them from just attacking in. I would really love a Burning Rune Demon, but we don't have that ability. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, they exiled one. So they can keep throwing them here. <laughs> so now they do have a 5-6, but I think, I mean, this can't... Just retarget Artifact or Enchantment. So they could kill the Sister's Call. It looks like they're probably just going to sack it. And they're just trying to get the attack in. What?! Why did they give up? <laughs> what? There was no reason for them to give up. They had one card in hand, I get it, but like, we had... We were close to... Alright. I, I don't know. Uh, that was weird. Let's talk about this deck. <laughs> All right, so Spirit Sisters Call with Abzan. Again, Legend VD, thank you so much for sharing this list. He did create this one. I did not. I just want to go ahead and, you know, clear that up right away. Uh, this is a really sick deck, though. I actually really enjoyed this. Um, we only got to do the Spirit Sisters Call trick uh, one time, really, like in that last game. Um, but you can see how just recurring even Binding of the Old Gods over and over really set us up to win the game. I don't think we had won that game yet. I think we were getting there, but I don't think we had won that game yet. Um, kind of curious as to why they just gave up the way they did. But all that to say, uh, I do think Spirit Sisters Call is such a powerful card and there's so many nice things you can do with it. Uh, that I'd like to see this in other capacities as well. So I do anticipate trying this out a little bit more later on down the line and seeing what other kind of decks we can get together with this. My goal is to build my own Spirit Sisters call list that I'm very happy with and kind of, you know, get it critiqued and get it, get it where I really think it's very good. Um, and I think this is a very solid start. Uh, I think this has all the options to, to really get you through the game, aside from that Meat Hook Massacre or, you know, a Doom Scar or something like that. Um, I get why they're not in the deck. Let me be very clear. Uh, Doom Scar is not a permanent. You can't pull it back. Uh, and so it is a card slot that you can't do that with, which is difficult. On top of that, uh, Meat Hook Massacre, while you can bring it back, it doesn't really do that much because, uh, I mean, it sets up the little, like, life drain kind of deal, but it doesn't actually kill anything if you bring it back with the Spirit Sisters call. So just some things to think about. But all that to say, uh, this is a very solid starting build, and I'm really excited to try this card out a lot more. So thank you so much to Legend VD for building this list. Thank you to all of you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're having a fantastic start to your week. And we will see you again very soon for some more gameplay video. Don't forget, guys, later today, we're going to have It Is What It Is. Our next episode is going up. That series is so much fun. If you don't know Country Fried, go check him out. He is phenomenal. I believe he has hit 500 subs, I hope. Uh, if not, go go sub to him. He's a really nice dude, and he, uh, he makes some really great content. So without further ado, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again real soon.